good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, um, it, it's really my uh, i'm always happy to talk about skill development and especially something which i can add to the overall knowledge base of the country in terms of skill ecosystem uh, the way i have structured this session is it's an introductory awareness level session on the national skills qualifications framework and gives you the contours of uh, the NSQF framework uh, and the key elements the framework has. The way I would do this is for about 35 to 40 minutes I will speak out and uh, after that we could have a Q&A session for about 15-20 minutes and in case you have any questions uh, please keep on jotting them down and if, if something you need clarifications on the slide which I am showing you could type it in uh, in the questions key box you can type in your question and uh, um, based on my comfort level at that point of time I would either answer it that time or little later. So let's start off. Uh, NSQF document was released in December 2013 so that's just about uh, little less than 16 months ago. Prior to this there was another framework for skills which was released by Ministry of HRD in September 2012 which is which was called NVEQF. Uh, I am not going to go into more historical details but just to uh, tell you that NSQF has replaced all the other existing frameworks which were existing that time whether NVEQF released by Ministry of HRD or the draft uh, framework which Ministry of Labor had made which was called NVQF without the E part uh, which Ministry of HRD had done. So let's look at what is NSQF at a principal conceptual level. Uh, there are three elements to it. One is it's a unified Indian qualification framework for skills and it's based on different levels of competencies that's important to understand and we'll talk more about it a little later and competencies in the area of knowledge, skills and aptitude. It's an outcome and competency based framework. Now just to distinguish between outcome and competency based framework versus the traditional framework which we use, uh, we are used to in our education system not just in India but worldwide. We are used to an input driven system where we say this subject would be taught for so many hours per semester. So let's say it's, it's a three credit course in a university typically and it's a theoretical course and it will be typically about 45 hours of classroom lecture per semester which would be a three credit course and it's all input driven. And in, in input driven time based courses the time is fixed but the learning outcomes or the mastery of those outcomes is flexible. Some students will get it, some will not get it. Uh, whereas in the competency based framework the time is flexible whereas the mastery of the learning outcomes is fixed. So everyone is supposed to know who qualifies on the competency based framework. They are supposed to know each and every element of that but they may learn it in a flexible time mode. Someone could pick it up in 50 hours. The same thing someone may take 100 hours to do it. Uh, so this whole framework is based on learning outcomes. There are 10 different levels of competencies which have been defined in the framework and we'll talk more about it a little later. And each level is defined by level descriptors. When we say this is a job role at level 1 or this is at level 4, how do we say that this particular set of competencies for a certain job is at level 1 or level 4 or level 6 is based on certain criteria which has been embedded in the level descriptors which are given in the NSQF document. And I would encourage all of you after this session is over to go to uh, maybe NSDA website or NSDC website or just do Google on NSQF uh, guideline document and read that 16, 17, uh, I think it's a 16 or 17 page document. I would encourage each one of you to read that in detail and after this session maybe some of the things would become uh, more clearer to you. The third aspect of NSQF is that it provides for multiple entry and exit points for a candidate, for a student or for a learner. So this could be in the context of the formal education system itself, whether this child is learning skills in school 
or in the higher education system or also in the non-formal system through private vocational training providers or any other governmental system which is focused only on training not on the overall education or even someone who has learned things on his own they can still uh, get certified and uh, which Subhash had mentioned about, about it when he spoke in the introductory session and we'll speak more about it which is called recognition of prior learning the second part it provides is industry inputs in developing qualifications so the whole NSKF framework is very very tightly integrated with industry in terms of defining competencies for different job roles in assessments and certification and the key element which drives and brings in the industry into the whole framework is the respective sector skill councils which are being created by NSDC jointly with industry employer the employer large and large middle sized employers in different sectors and various trade association bodies like CII, FICI, etc. And so sector skill councils are the key anchor pin for bringing in industry expertise into the whole NSPF framework. The third aspect is recognition of prior learning. Till now uh, we are used to the fact that someone has to undergo a certain course or a program and then get assessed and certified which remains I mean nothing wrong with that but there are large number of uh, people in India who learn through experience through apprenticeship and we are we are very well known about the Guru Chela Shishya where an air conditioner mechanic comes home with a small uh, guy with him called Pappu he will know uh, Raju or someone and for two or one or two years he would keep on shadowing this person and gradually start understanding and start doing things and maybe another two years this person may become the master and he would get his own Pappu or Raju or Chela and that's how traditionally whether you're talking about electrician, plumbing, uh, tailoring, uh, air conditioner mechanic, the TV mechanic etc. things have kind of got transferred the knowledge and skills in a very unstructured manner. So the, these people also uh, who have not gone through formal system of education, training or attended a training program also have an option of uh, getting assessed and certified and then getting empowered so that when they go an electrician or a plumber goes to someone's house he could say I, I my expertise is this and I've got a certification at job level 3 from the plumbing sector skill council and so on and so forth and it also provides for lifelong learning and in the current context uh, probably every few years people would have to get retrained on new things, new technologies which are coming in whether it's a plumber or whether it's a PCB designer or maybe a person who's an auto mechanic uh, or a person who's into a technology role, in service role, in agriculture sector with the new technologies, new processes, methodologies which, which are coming at a rapid rate one may need to keep on getting retrained and recertified on newer skills so this framework allows for that uh, through lifelong learning process uh, the key pillars again I'm focusing right now at the at the key spirit behind the whole NSTF then we look at the nuts and bolts of NSTF one is its outcome based learning and if you look at the bottom part of the uh, slide here it says requires stakeholder consultations and consensus with state, central government, sector skill councils, industry, education boards. Uh, I sorry, I missed out training providers. That also should be here, part of the very very critical part of the stakeholders, uh, which should also have been added by me here. And then there are six pillars in this. Uh, from a spirit perspective, you'll not see these six pillars written as such in the document, but they are embedded in different parts of the place. There's a convergence among stakeholders and the policies, whether it's the industry, whether it's the formal education system, whether it's the non-formal bodies, the certification, the assessment bodies, and the regulatory framework, which is emerging now. Uh, bottoms up labor market information. So the skilling and training which needs to be provided has to be in the context of supply demand situation at a national level, at a state level, at a district level, at a town level, 
or even at a global level. And we heard our Prime Minister talking about yesterday that India with uh, with 160 crore hands, youth uh, are ready to uh, would be the driving force behind the global uh, driving the uh, providing the skills globally. The third very very critical aspect of the NSQF is, uh, which is the heart of NSQF, is industry endorsed qualification packs and national occupational standards. And I'll speak more about it today. So these are the competencies which are defined within the national occupational standards, which are also called NOSs in short form, and qualification packs. And I have a slide completely focused on this. Uh, actually three slides focused on this in this presentation. The fourth pillar is training and capacity building mechanism for delivery. And these training and capacity building mechanisms could be in varied forms. It could be vocational training providers who are in the private for profit sector. It could be not for profit NGOs doing training programs which are focused only on training. It could be the formal education system like the secondary schools, senior secondary schools, the higher education system, the polytechnics, the ITIs, building in skills within those and which are industry mandated so that the certification which happens for different job roles there are similar to what happens in the VTPs or through the private uh, training system or even through recognition of prior learning. So there are equivalences and that starts building in mobility of the learners and bringing in lifelong learning. And from an employment perspective also it starts giving equivalences to people who may have gone through learning through any system uh, as long as they meet the input criteria for recruitment for that job. Quality assurance standards, assessment parameters and certification they are again embedded within the national skills qualification framework and the way they work is the sector skill councils, each of the sector skill councils, there are 31 of them which have already been created by NSDC and few more are in the pipeline. Uh, they are making the qualification packs and nurses and they are also creating the whole assessment ecosystem for their industry sector. So if we talk about healthcare, so anything to do with the healthcare except the regulatory part of MBBS and nursing, uh, they are creating that or if you are talking about plumbing then there is a plumbing sector skill council, if we are talking about automotive the Automotive Sector Skill Council is doing that, so they are supposed to set up the assessment parameters under the overall guidelines of NSQF and as provided by NSDC and the certification also is done by them. And then recognition at all levels as single standard for skills based education and training. This is extremely important in a large complex country like us when we have a uh, set of competencies or framework. Uh, uh, occupational standards put in in a qualification pack for a job role, then a student could get certified whether in school or college or in a private sector or through recognition of prior learning or uh, or in whichever mechanism, engineering college, polytechnics, but the cert and the certification would be equivalent for the same job role. It will have equal credibility for all purposes, whether it's for academic purposes and learning purposes or for recruitment purposes and employment purposes. So these are the six uh, hallmarks of uh, uh, of the national skills qualification framework. Uh, I just got a message from uh, on the question box from Anjani Singh saying that soft skills should also be included as per the sector. Uh, and uh, you are absolutely right Anjani, in fact what has happened is each of the qualification packs and when we discuss that have soft skills embedded, their nurses for soft skills relevant to that job role in each of the qualification packs, so they, are, they are embedded in that uh, sector, the qualification packs for the, res for the respective job role, so soft skills are extremely important and they are they are being embedded in the respective qualification packs. Now some key definitions I thought it would be useful to know. Uh, uh, there are many definition, definitions given in the NSQF document but it would be good to understand four or five words as they are uh, used in the, in the context of NSQF. One is what is a qualification? 
a qualification is a formal outcome of assessment and validation which is obtained when a competent body determines that an individual has achieved the learning outcomes. Now the key here is learning outcomes to given standards and those standards are defined in the qualification pack and the national occupational standards embedded in that qualification pack and typical competent bodies for assessment would be driven through with NSGC and as the second level of FX body beyond NSDC, I mean just one level above that is something called a National Skills Qualification Committee and then actually be implemented in the system in the field through the sector skill councils and their assessment bodies. And the word competence, again I spoke about it earlier but uh, let's understand that again the proven ability to use acquired knowledge skills personal attitude, social abilities in discharge of responsibility roles and ability to do, do that job very well. Uh, recognition of prior learning, we discussed that earlier. So I'm not repeating that. National occupation standards specify the standards of performance an individual must achieve. Uh, when carrying out a function in the workplace, together with the knowledge and understanding the need to meet the standard consistently. For example, uh, one auto technician may need to know how to change the oil filter in a petrol car. So that becomes that there could be a nose around that particular task which is part of a larger QP for that job role. Just as, as an example. And qualification pack is a set of nurses and is required and is meant for one job role. So there's a one is to one correspondence between a job role and a qualification pack and we'll, we'll spend a little more time later on that. Uh, there are certain comments coming from Yuvish Singh and I'm very happy to see the kind of interaction which is happening through the question box. Uh, one question Yuvish has said is a lot of QPs have generic nurses. Do you think, think a detailed analysis needs to be done for each QP? Uh, see what we need to understand is there might be, there would be differences in the quality of different QPs and different nurses across sector skill councils or within the sector skill council also. and. Uh, and you need to appreciate that the work has been done over the last, the work actually started 24 months ago and this is the first iteration which it has gone through, it is going through. Uh, I'm sure in the, when the revisions happen and there's a practical field level implementation also and issues and suggestions which will come up, the sector skill councils will start defining those nurses wherever they are lacunas, they would start strengthening them in the second round. So that, that's really my answer to that question. And another question from Arshdeep says, how to match job roles with the qualification packs? So I hope that question is answered. A qualification pack is meant for one job role. So a job role, the competencies needed for a job role are embedded in a qualification pack. Uh, so there are 10 levels in NSQF. Uh, which are defined. Each level is defined by criteria expresses learning outcome. We'll see a couple of examples. Another thing which you need to, I thought I'll re-emphasize is NSQF levels are not directly related to years of study which has been done and it's not that level 3 is equal to this class, level 4 is equal to this class, level 7 is equal to this class. Although you would have seen that in some of the older documents of NVEQF, and it has somewhere down the line got did get embedded in people's head, people's mind and mindset that each level corresponds to a certain educational qualification because that was given in the NBQF document. But when we look at the NSQF document, it does not do any correlation between a certain competence level versus educational levels as we traditionally know 9, 10, 11, 12, BA first year, second year, third year and so on and so forth. So, uh, if you know, the, the screen which you have uh, are basically how the 10 levels have been defined. There are 5 different criteria which have been used. 
or level descriptors one is on process second is around professional knowledge third is around professional skill you will see that on the top row in this uh, slide the fourth is around core skills and fifth one is the level of responsibility so each level has a set of these uh, parameters across this five dimensions defined and when a job role is being kind of created and architected by the sector skill council and there's a, they have a detailed methodology for doing that uh, so each sector skill council may have 50, 60, 100 odd different job roles so the way they define a job role uh, and once they have created a job role they look at that job role best what is the best fitment of that job role within the level descriptors across these 10 levels so wherever the best fitment comes in they peg that job role at that NSPF level and one of the key drivers they also look at is the last column which is on responsibility for example the level 1 if you read the responsibility column the descriptor for level 1 you can very clearly understand that this is meant for unskilled people who are doing routine and repetitive tasks take safety and security measures and for example a person who is carrying bricks and making a stack of bricks could be a very unskilled person uh, at, at level 4 is you will see certain amount of self responsibility starts coming in and if you look at professional skill it talks about recall and demonstrate practical skill routine and repetitive in narrow range of application using appropriate rule and tools using quality concepts and in the core skill you will see there are certain communications which are needed written or oral with clarity skills in basic arithmetic and algebraic principles basic understanding of social political natural environment in which they work with because they start working at a little first level of supervisory kind of a stuff and similarly each of the levels are defined in the NSQ document once you go through it in those 18 pages you will see uh, the level descriptors which have been uh, explained for each of the levels so again to recap here the sector skill councils look at the different job roles for a particular job role they look at which is the best fitment among the level descriptors and that job role gets picked at that competence level or that NSQF level uh, now there are three questions uh, let me just go through them you have you give lots of QPs but there are no certain areas or questions set up for exam level uh, so Minakshi uh, this is an observation which comes from Minakshi so the QPs are actually most of the QPs are pretty detailed have gone through over at least 25 30 of them in different sectors and basically a person should be able to do the uh, do whatever is mandated in that QP so you may not, as of now, you, you there are, I'm sure some of the entrepreneurial people in the uh, in the country will start bringing out guides and punjis even for passing these assessment exams, okay, uh, given the entrepreneurship we see in the Indians, uh, but there, there are no questions given, you're absolutely right, but they're giving uh, what are the criteria and the framework for assessment all the qualification tags are not provided on the website for QP matching I can't understand that question actually but all the qualification packs which have been released are available on the NSDC website and the website of respective sector skill councils minimum hours for engagement as per NSDC standard for designing a curriculum Shiriz, I don't think there's any mandated number of hours which is given over there uh, yeah my friend I think Lokesh Mehra is saying QP is a club of several nurses, yes. Qualification pack is a set of many nurses and let's look at the next slide. So let me, so if you look at a qualification pack, one qualification pack can have, would have multiple nurses. So it's a one to many relationship in a qualification pack for it. Uh, so one qualification pack is for one job role. And then within a qualification pack, there are multiple nurses. The way you may like to look at is for one job role there could be multiple tasks to be done. 
let's say there are seven, eight, nine, ten key tasks to be done for that job role, and for each task, a NOS gets created, and combination of these tasks and these NOSes, uh, tasks which are embedded in NOS becomes a qualification pack. So qualification pack is is a combination of multiple NOSes. Now, just as an example, I have taken a job role of CCTV supervisor from the Security Sector Skill Council to just explain what are the other key elements of a qualification pack. So it says it's at level five. So, so this is mentioned in in the uh, in the headers in the qualification pack that this particular job role is at NSTF level five. Minimum educational qualification given is class 12. So actually this is not mandated by the Sector Skill Council but this is recommended that this person who becomes a CCTV supervisor should have at least finished class 12 education because of the kind nature of jobs a person needs to do. There is no maximum educational qualification prescribed in this particular NOS but some NOSs have prescribed maximum educational qualification which would have to do with basically a person could be at a higher qualification but that shows that this the person would really be very very over qualified for this job role let's say a person was an MA let's say the maximum educational qualification is somewhere is BSc and a person is is an MTech so it only indicates that this person would be grossly over qualified for this job role but it does not stop that person from doing the job then there are certain number of nurses which are given in this set in this particular job role. For this qualification pack, there are nine nurses, which are like nine tasks the CCTV supervisor would do. So first is monitor the security unit, supervise CCTV operations to secure premises, maintain operational performance so that it remains on throughout, observe health and safety while monitoring security operations, security tasks in accordance with basic security, the whatever this person does should conform to the FASARA Act of 2005 while undertaking the security tasks. So this person needs to have appropriate knowledge of this act. Security in commercial deployments, that person should understand that in industrial deployments. And from a soft skill perspective, positive projection of self in the organization. Because this person may not really have too much of interaction with customers, etc. So there's not too much of, uh, uh, you won't see it nurses in terms of inter-team work or interpersonal work or handling customers, but this is more of a back-end work which the person does. Uh, in the meanwhile, there's a question which Rahul had said, does there, is there any kind of industry participation in finalizing the QP? So I'll answer that question Rahul in a minute. So there are nine nurses in the qualification pack for the job role of CCTV supervisor and these are available on the website of either NSCC or Security Sector Skill Council. Now let's look at what does each NOS consist of. So if we see this circle here, each NOS has three basic components. It lists down what are the performance criteria which is what they need to do, knowledge what they need to know and skills which is to do with the softer part of the job. So each of the nurses have got that embedded in them. The knowledge, performance criteria and skills are defined at a quite a granular level in most of the qualification, in most of the nurses. Now let me just spend a little more time here because many of you would, this needs to be clear to most of you that about qualification pack, nurses, and you'll keep on hearing this word in the press, in, in your ecosystem. So that's why I'm spending a little more time here. Uh, one job role means one qualification pack. One qualification pack would have multiple nurses. But there is one more dimension. The same nurse could be there in multiple qualification packs. So let's say it's conformed to PASARA Act. 2005 while undertaking security tasks that uh, the NOS number 6 in the screen may be embedded in more job roles of security sector. So a NOS could appear in multiple uh, job roles. Uh, 
um, or multiple qualification paths. I hope that's clear to you. Uh, so let me now answer Rahul's question that is there any industry participation in finalizing the QPs? As for the, there's a detailed process guidelines which have been laid down by the National Skill Development Corporation, NSDC, for developing qualification packs and NOSs. And these are developed by sector skill councils. And again, to remind you, sector skill councils are primarily industry representative bodies. The chairman of the sector skill council would typically be uh, the CEO or a chairman of a large uh, industry in that sector and most of the majority of the members would come from diverse employer organizations in that sector. So the NOSs and QPs are created through very very active industry engagement and participation so in each of the steps of the NOSs while they are getting created. So at a design level there is a complete industry engagement at the QP level. Now if you ask whether every employer would have been asked their feedback on CC, while creating this CCTV supervisor qualification pack, uh, there is one step at the end where the sector skill council puts up and the NSDC puts up the NOSES which are in draft stage on their website and gives a certain time of few weeks for anyone to respond and give their feedback on that NOS. So small employers or training providers or any other individual experts can give their feedback on that QP or a NOS. So I, I am getting a message from Ritu Bhatnagar that we are not able to hear anything, only slide is visible. If others are able to hear me, please uh, say yes on the question block. Because I am unmuted here. Uh, so I think uh, others are able to hear uh, Ritu. Probably there is some problem at your uh, at your end. Uh, because everyone else is, uh, is typing in yes. So I have got at least 25 yeses and that is very encouraging. That shows me that everyone is awake and not uh, <laughs> and finding this session useful. So that is a good feedback also for me. Uh, so there is an active industry engagement in the process of creating QPs and NOSs. Uh, now there is one more body, very critical body which has been envisaged in the NSDF document framework which is called National Skills Qualifications Committee. Now NSDF document, the owner of NSDF document now is a National Skill Development Agency which is a statutory body which has been created by Government of India. So they are the anchor or the owners of the NSTF document. And the NSTF at the apex level, at the national level, uh, the key body for implementation is the National Skills Qualification Committee. Uh, the list of their members, etc. is all given in the document of NSTF. And I have not listed down all the functions of NSTF, but some of the major functions of NSTF are uh, li listed here like approval and notification of qualification packs, approval of accreditation norms for training providers, approval of the creation of sector skill councils, resolving disputes and issues across ministries, across regulators, whether it's CBSC, AICT or nursing association or uh, and different ministries, departments, state governments, coordinate and align Indian qualifications to international qualifications. And this is one very, very interesting opportunity which is getting created and NSDC has been working over it for the last few probably about 12 odd months. They are talking to three four countries in a very very serious manner in a, and in advanced stage where they are creating equivalences of the Indian the NOSs or qualification packs with what is approved for those countries. So I think some of the key countries they have been talking to is Canada you would have heard of yesterday that uh, NSDC, uh, India signed 12-13 uh, agreements on skills uh, which was primarily being driven by NSDC and uh, Mr. Dilip Chennai, the CEO, MD CEO of NSDC had signed those agreements yesterday in Canada. Similarly, Australia is another country they have been talking to in advanced stages in some one or two Middle East countries uh, in terms of 
creating equivalences between Indian skills quality, the NSQF qualifications and those countries qualifications. Now you would notice that I haven't said US. US is another large country and partner of India. I thought just for your general knowledge, US does not have any such skills qualifications framework. Canada does have, uh, UK does have, Australia does have, but US does not have such a qualification framework. Of course, they have their own methods of licensing various skilled professionals. Um, so address the transition issues, map progression pathways for uh, for different sectors, for different people, like from one level to the another level. So these are some of the key aspects and functions of NSQC. And I think these things will evolve as we move forward. Uh, sector skill councils I have already been talking about. Just, for, just as a recap, they are formed in partnership with the uh, industry, with NSGC being the apex body which is helping create these and guide uh, the sector skill councils. Uh, 31 sector skill councils have been created. Some of the areas I have already given here. Uh, there's retail, healthcare, IT, tourism and hospitality, automotive, capital goods, plumbing, leather, rubber. So the large number of sector skill councils, in fact one of the sector skill councils which CII is leading right now, which is under formation, is a sector skill council for persons with disabilities. So that probably would be the first sector skill council which should be like a horizontal sector skill council which will create job roles uh, and qualification packs by fine tuning the qualification packs of different sector skill councils and they are planning to create about 200 qualification packs over the next 18 to 24 months for persons with disabilities. Uh, role of sector skill councils, some of the key roles is identifying job roles, create national occupation standards and qualification packs, set up mechanisms for assessment and certification for those and of course the whole industry engagement that's understood that's the primary role of sector skill council itself is an industry body so i haven't put that down because that's very very fundamental to sector skill councils uh, then there's an implementation schedule of nsqf so nsqf was notified in december on 27 december 2013 and uh, nsqf supersedes all frameworks from that day onwards and from that day onwards, it's supposed to give, uh, get preferential government funding for all NSQF compliant courses. Now, the second milestone is on 27 December 2016 and you would have, most of you would have read in the newspapers over the last 7 to 10 days, our uh, skills minister, Mr. Rajiv Pratap Rudi has been talking about and is starting to sensitize employers and also potential employees that the recruitment rules have to be made in alignment with NSQF. Uh, so if you look at the uh, third bullet point in the uh, third anniversary, go Government of India and Central Government PSUs should define recruitment eligibility criteria for all positions in terms of NSQF levels after 27 December 2016, which is about, uh, uh, let's say, 9, 8 plus 12, 20 months away and it's a humongous task, it's, it will not be an easy job but I'm glad that the minister and, the, and his ministry has started working towards that. The government funding will be given only for NSQF compliant courses in the area of skills. So no provider whether it's government or private because NSQF has not differentiated that here in the document. So my interpretation is that only government funding will only be given for NSQF compliant training courses. So all NSGC partners are already moving into NSQF compliant courses. Another important part is for all government funding, government funded training and educational institutions, admission eligibility would be in terms of NSQF levels. Now this is again a humongous task. How this would be done, what implementation mechanisms would be created is something which uh, would evolve over a period of time. Uh, the fourth part after the, on the third anniversary which has to happen is state governments and the state governments PSUs would be and are encouraged to amend the recruitment rules. They are, they are not being forced by, by 2016 to start implementing but government, central government wants them to start looking at the recruitment rules. 
and from the 5th anniversary which is 2018 December it will be mandatory for all training educational programs and courses to be NSQF compliant so it's not talking about government funding here it's talking about across the country they have to be compliant and all training and education institutions shall define input or admission criteria in terms of NSQF levels So these are the critical milestones which have been given in the NSQ of document. Of course, there are certain, as I read them, there are certain questions which would be there in your minds and it's there in my mind also, but I'm sure the, the answers would be provided, but answers would have to be created jointly by the ministry, by NSDA, by NSDC and other regulatory bodies as we move forward. And my own personal understanding is NSQF is uh, is a framework which is giving directions it is at a conceptual level of course there are some things which are very well nuts and bolts are given but the in detailed implementation mechanisms or implementation structures would have to evolve and some of them have start, have been evolving over last over last couple of years for example in this in the school education system uh, Government of India has, uh, MHRD has uh, schemes for bringing skills from class 9 to class 12 and many states have started implementing that in the secondary and senior secondary schools. So certain implementation mechanisms have evolved over the last, have been created over the last two or three years where NSDC has been a part of that, Vadwani Foundation has been a part of that. Uh, and CBSC has been a part of that. The respective state education boards have been a part of that. For example, the Haryana School Education Board, in fact, was the first board which altered the scheme of studies to include skill subjects. Uh, the assessment and certifications, assessment criteria has been changed there for the skill-based courses where the assessors or the sector skill councils will also play a part in assessing the students who are studying in those schools for the skill course which they are doing. So some of the states which have already started, I think there are about 9 or 10 states which have already started. Haryana has taken the lead, uh, followed by Himachal Pradesh, Ra Rajasthan started this year, Himachal and Punjab started last year, Karnataka started last year, Sikkim had also started I think about a year ago, uh, Uttarakhand is starting this year, uh, I am going to Jharkhand in fact tomorrow, Jharkhand is going to start in this academic year and sure another 10-12 uh, gov state governments would definitely start off this year. Uh, so the good thing is once an implementation mechanism is created for in one kind of an area, for example here in the school system from 9, class 9 to class 12, every other state starts looking at that system and adapting it to their requirements. In active uh, dialogue with NSDC or organizations like Vadwani Foundation to create the state specific structures. So there's a lot of commonality which is coming across that. Similarly in the higher education sector, yeah, so Mr. Chitbir is saying that it's also started in Madhya Pradesh, yes, and even Maharashtra, I missed that out. Thanks for uh, uh, telling me that. Uh, so there's a question from on syllabus which probably I'll, I'll answer once I finish my presentation which are coming in. So even UGC has created and has funded about 300 plus institutions for bringing in skill based courses in the name of community college or the bachelors in vocational studies which have these job roles embedded in them. So, so there are different implementation mechanisms which are getting evolved with time. Uh, uh, under the leadership of NSDC and the sec and the skills ministry and the various sector skill councils. So we would see much more of that happening given the fact that we have a very, very proactive minister and a very, very active ministry now uh, uh, in place. And uh, last two or three months we have started seeing a sense of urgency in the officials there as uh, I mean starting with the minister, the secretary and all the joint secretaries and of course the NSGC was all, all, already there since last four years actively driving and creating many of the systems. So I am going to open this 
to question answer session now there there were certain uh, questions which have already come in uh, one is will this powerpoint presentation be shared for future reference so mr subhash sapu is saying yes uh, how training providers will comply uh, courses to nsqf now if the training providers do not comply then over the next couple of years they would start becoming redundant because the recruitment rules at least in the government system we start looking at that the learners and students will start demanding that and i'm sure people in the private sector employees would also start looking at nsq uh, as an eligibility criteria for their for different job roles and i think that would probably start happening uh, my own estimation is in the next two or three months we'll start seeing that movement happening uh, and we should give it a time frame of 24 to 36 months to 2 to 3 years for that to really uh, come up to a critical mass level so there would be no option for those training providers than to start aligning their curriculum uh, with the uh, qualification packs and nosses under nsqf uh, there is another question which is uh, what are the steps nsdc is taking to sensitize youth about nsqf right now uh, nsdc has been actively involved through one is sensitizing the state governments different departments and the and they also have a network of about 180 vocational training providers who are their partners they are also doing that at their local level but i think a lot more needs to be done and sessions like this which ci is organized today will go in many more sessions like this would go a long way in sensitizing people and there have been questions about how does a syllabus sync with nsqf uh, sector skill councils are going to play a large role a big role in that so that role has started getting evolved but again as i said this is a movement which whatever has happened in the last 3 to 4 years in the country around this whole process would typically have happened in 7 to 8 years so it's really been uh, the time has been crunched and things have moved at a pretty fast speed under the leadership of uh, uh, mr dilip chinoy and mr ramadurai so uh, things will keep on evolving i'm sure and such discussions sessions will keep on making people aware about what's happening uh there's another question on uh, uh, some high end courses like pneumatic robotic courses are not match with qps yes there are some many job roles in the high end where the qps are not been created as a strategy what nsdc had decided two years ago was they wanted sector skill councils to focus on creating job roles first in the first phase for those those jobs which constitute 80% of the job role or 80% of the demand so there's a large mass demand those job roles for those job roles the qps and nosses were created are being created in the phase 1 and i'm sure in the next phase uh, we would see many many more qps getting created for more specialized courses at level 6 7 and 8 right now you see most of the qps are have been created for job roles 2 3 4 and 5 and very few for level 6 and 7 and i think almost none for level 8 so those would get created start getting created in a uh, uh, in a um, uh, as we move forward so what about nsq of certification manchu is asking nsq of recognition by industry see industry starts recognizing we would say industry has recognized the certification when they start recruiting based on the nsq of certification and as i said i expect next 3 to 12 months we'll see a major movement towards that from the industry i'm very hopeful that private industry will respond to that uh, and it will benefit them anyway in the long run uh, because if there's an ecosystem which is getting created the whole governmental machine which is getting is aligned to that now uh, almost i would say 95% of it then the private industry would also get aligned with it uh let me see if there are some more question which i would like to answer uh and please keep on typing questions if you have any further questions
will the qps be co curricular with existing education offerings asks mr hanumant uh, uh, see what we need to understand is uh, let's say we there's a uh, in a community college which is which is offering a one year diploma post 12 standard let me take an example if it's for a general duty assistant nursing assistant course a one year diploma in community college would typically have 40% general education content and 60% content would be skill based now that 60% content the institutions uh, the 60% of the skill com component the institutions would uh, identify the job roles on which they want to train so 60% sorry for this interruption uh, there is a little technical glitch so 60% the skill component the community college will based on the local industry requirement will decide what job roles they want to embed in the curriculum then they'll pick up the qualification packs for those job roles and create the curriculum based on that and the assessments for those skill based components would be done by the respective sector civil councils and the assessors so that's the methodology and you can uh, actually i would also encourage you to uh, browse the ugc website and download the guidelines for community college and the bwoc program that will also give you an idea as to how these are getting embedded in the curriculum in the higher education sector as well and similarly the cbcs scheme which the mhrd has created for the higher education the choice based credit system that also envisages optional subjects which would be skill based the same methodology would be used in those as well so these skill based courses i would say from the educational perspective it's an application based skills uh, which would get embedded in the educational courses whether you learning history or physics or electronics or commerce or economics uh, so there are few more questions any steps being planned to educate industry managers about the nsqf so i think cii is, uh, has taken has been doing this in a uh, over the last few months, uh, this probably is the third session on similar kind of topics I have taken and I am told that uh, some more webinars have happened. And the more the ministry talks about it, the people would start talking about it. And sector skill council also would play a major role, have to play a major role. Uh, what is the possibility of job after doing these courses? So the skill based, NSQF based courses are being designed and if you remember the one of the pillars which i showed was a labor management information system which should look at the demand supply of the way for various job roles in different sectors at a national state level district level uh, so the offerings need to be aligned with that and when there's a when we are providing training whether in the for profit sector or not for profit private training providers or in a formal education sector, uh, the probability of getting employment after these courses needs to be high, would be high. That's that's my uh, that's my opinion. There's another question about whether the assessment methodology is defined. Uh, there are guidelines which are coming out for the assessment methodology, and the new qualification packs are embedding that little better in the in the qualification qualification packs so there are two more questions probably I'll, those might be the last two questions I'll take one from Aditya and second from Rajeshekar Machi so Aditya is asking will the exam system in higher education institutions take transition from a theory based exam on past year paper to project based evaluation system uh, my answer is yes and no Yes, for the skill based courses which are compliant with NSQF, it will be a combination of theory and uh, practice. For the general education or so called academic subjects as the higher education institutions and universities say, it's up to the universities to decide how do they want to look at it. NSGC will not be able to force them to change the assessment criteria for the general education subjects, but 
if the if they are saying the skill based courses are nsdf compliant then they'll have to follow the same assessment guidelines and get that component certified through the sector skill councils assessors and do a joint certification as a co certification between the university and the respective sector skill council and that process is actually already started by nsdc uh, another question from rajesh shekhar is most of the skills in the unorganized sector are primarily dependent on the number of years spent in the sector if one were to pass level 5 by the 12 standard do we envisage them getting a job after passing out based on their competencies as we are still in, the, in an evangelist phase if this say not to happen wouldn't this program become an iti kind of initiative raj my compliments for this question to you uh, very very appropriate question uh the answer there is no concrete answer to this uh all i can say is as a country we have decided to follow create a certain ecosystem over the last 3 years or so and with the new government new nda government come in one of the things which has happened is the government has decided to continue with the same process of calling of nsqf going forward and accelerate its implementation so we are seeing continuity over there from that side and i'm sure uh, over a period of time the labor ministry uh, the industries ministry at the central level and at the state level will start aligning to these ecosystem and how does a private sector align to them is something which uh, which only time would tell but i am very optimistic and positive about it and at least for the organized sector jobs i am very very optimistic on the unorganized sector jobs i i may not have a very very clear cut answers at this point of time it will only be pure conjectures okay so that's my take and if maybe another minute or two we have so if there's one more last question someone wants to ask could ask before we bring this session to a close and thank you so much for such a wonderful uh, quality of questions and quantity of questions which have been asked in this webinar uh, and that makes me more optimistic about the fact that this is the the country has chosen the right path of course there will be a lot of implementation glitches which we should be prepared with but that's very natural for such a large exercise which the country is going through and thank you so much and uh, thanks for saying thank you on the question box Uh, one last qu one question which has come from Arshdeep is, who is responsible for the jobs of students once he or she has cleared all the levels? Even then, he not get the job. See, okay, there are two different aspects. Each student may not clear all the levels. They need to look at what job role they want to do and clear assessment and certification for those jobs only. Uh, and who is responsible for jobs? I would say the the student himself. the industry finally the jobs are given by the employers whether in the government sector or the private sector so there has to be a win win for both of them only when an alignment only then the employment situation would improve and that's one of the thing with the uh, with the nsqf process and the skill ministry is is uh, working towards the rest the time will tell how i mean what's the degree of success and uh, i would say that there's no other alternative for the country at, at this point of time uh, except to make this a success and i'm sure we would make it a success thank you so much and thanks for uh, all the compliments which you have put in in the you have typed in in the question bank thank you so much uh thank you ajay uh, i would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, you for uh, sharing uh, Uh, as to how nsqf will uh, uh, is going to play uh, going forward uh, as far as the participants go i am sure you know they would have benefited immensely from uh, 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 from this webinar going by the number of questions you have answered uh, as you said quality as well as, as well as quantity uh, i would also like to thank the participants for making so very interactive uh, and uh, anybody having uh, any questions uh, which haven't been answered yet or wanting to ask question even later can write into cii and and we'll get back to you and uh, you will also get a, a you know a, 
a mail from uh, the CII, you know, and you could you could write in uh, back with your.